Today we're going to look at logarithmic equations and the natural log in particular. I want to remind you back to when we talked about different types of compounding growth. We could compound annually. That's the normal equation. Y equal to start times 1 plus R to the T. Notice that we're starting with $1,000 here. That's our principal. That's what we're starting with. The rate is 10%, and we're going to do that for 25 years. Now, if we compound that quarterly, the difference is we'll divide by 4, our rate, and then to the power of 4 is just one year. So if we're going to do 25 years, we go to the power of 4 times 25, or 100. If we compounded daily, we would take our rate and divide by 365. And then to the power of 365 would be one year. In 25 years, I'd multiply by 25. Be careful if you plug something like that in that you put parentheses here. Hourly. So I divide by 8,760. There are approximately that many hours in a year. And I go to the power of 8,760 for one year and then times 25 for 25 years. Notice the next one. There are th about this many minutes in a year. And I go to that power for one year times 25 for 25 years. And if I compounded each second, there are this many seconds in a year to that power for one year times 25 for 25 years. So why am I talking about this? It turns out that the more times you compound something, the closer and closer you do get to a special number that is used to represent continuous growth. That is growth that's not added once a month or four times a month or once a second. It's continuous. Take a look at these numbers and notice that there is something odd going on here. Once a year, $10,834.71. When I do that quarterly, look what happens. Notice I'm taking my point 0.1, dividing it by 4, then to the power of 4 is 1 year, multiplying it by 25 for 25 years. Nice jump from $10,834.71 to $11,813.72. Then, when I do that daily, I'm dividing by 365 and going to the power of 365 times 25, uh, we get another nice jump to $12,178.32. Then when I do that hourly, suddenly the difference isn't quite so much. It only went up $4. Changing hourly to minutes, we only go up 17 cents. And when we compound in seconds, every second money is being added to the account, it didn't make any difference at all. There is a slight difference in the decimal, but it's not visible when we round to the nearest penny. Take a look at these calculations in Desmos and look at the last two. The more times we compound, the closer we get to that maximum theoretical continuous growth that we will be talking about in a moment. As I said, the, the larger this number is, the more times we compound, we're calling that number n. As n gets larger and larger, as it goes to infinity, it turns out there is a number that we're approaching that can model this kind of behavior. And it is called e. Notice e to the r times t, that was 0.1 for our percent, 10 percent, times 25 years, produces exactly the same decimal as just this part of the equation. That e to the r times t is the same thing as 1 plus 1 over n, where n is the number of times I compound, to the power of n times t, where t is time. As n gets larger and larger and larger, these two values get closer and closer to the same thing. 
if we call our rate one and our time one, these are just convenient numbers to use, one would be 100% and time would be one year. And I plug in one and one, and I plug in in R and T one and one, it's E to the one times one, which is E to the first or E that we can see E right here. Here's E, that special number talking about. And look how close it is here. And the larger I make this number, the closer and closer it will get to that E. E then is one plus one over N to the power of N as N gets larger and larger, as N goes to infinity. If we go to Desmos and graph that, um, we're going to let x be n. This is the number of times it's compounded. And we put that in Desmos. Plug this equation in Desmos. Notice as x, which is the number of times it's compounded, gets larger and larger and larger, our number here gets closer and closer and closer to e. E is used for things that are continuously compounded, meaning that growth is continuous. It's not in intervals. We don't add once a month or once a year. In a bank account that's compounded monthly, there's no change in the value of an investment except when interest is added once a month, or it might be once a year. The amount in the account stays the same until the very end of the month or the very end of the year, depending on when it's compounded. That's not the way things grow naturally. It's continuous growth. Think of yourself when you were a child. You didn't suddenly grow an inch at the end of every year. You grew continuously. E is part of the natural language of growth. E provides us a way to model continuous growth very easily. Then this equation that we've been using to compound quarterly, monthly, maybe daily, turns out to be the same thing as this equation if we let n go to infinity, where we're compounding continuously. A equals P times E to the RT. Think of PERT. PERT means attractively lively or cheeky. Isn't this an attractive equation? Let's model the below question with E. How much would you get if you invested $1,000 at 5% for 10 years compounded continuously? Just take this equation, the amount we get, we'll call that A equals, P is our start, just like up here, it's $1,000 times E to the power of R times T. The rate is 5%, that's 0 0.05, use parentheses here, times the time, which is 10 years. Go and punch this into Desmos, Desmos knows what E is. This investment becomes $1,648.72. Now that we have E, we can talk about the natural logarithm. In equations that involve E, the natural logarithm makes them much easier to solve. The natural log of X is exactly the same thing as the log of X that's base E. There is no difference between those two. That means all the logarithm rules apply. The natural log of A times B is the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. When you multiply, you add your exponents. That's how you remember that rule. When you divide, you subtract your exponents. The natural log of A divided by B is the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. And this is the power of a power rule. When you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply your exponents, you bring that down in front, and this is b times the natural log of a. It's exactly what you've learned so far, it's just that it's base e. It's the only difference. Something to point out here, though, is that 
When you see the natural log of E, remember it's base E. And you know that is 1 because the base, that's E, to the power of, a log is an exponent, to the power of 1 equals E. The rest of this video is questions from your assignment. These first questions are supposed to be review, but we haven't done a lot of them, so you may need to watch some of them. Please use this video to help you during your homework. Question one, solve this thing exactly. As long as these logs have the same base, the only way they can be equal is if these two parts are equal. In other words, negative x plus five has got to equal 10. If we take a 5 off each side, negative x has got to equal 5. We'll divide by negative 1, and we can see that x would be negative 5. Note that if I plug in negative 5, it becomes the opposite of negative 5, which is 5, and 5 plus 5 is 10. Question 3. Let's solve this equation with logarithms. We're solving for an exponent. That's how we know we need to use a logarithm. 900 times 1.31 to the power of t equals 32,805. Now, if you want to avoid a bunch of steps, which is my recommendation, I would divide both sides by 900. Let's just point out why you might want to do that. If you wrote the log of 900 times 1.31 to the power of t equals the log of 32,805. The problem is this is an a times a b. In other words, you can't bring that exponent down. You can't do it. You've got to make this the log of 900 when you multiply your add your powers plus the log of 1.31 to the power of t equals the log of 32,805. And then you can bring that t down. But you'll need to subtract the log of 900 from both sides. And then once you bring the t down, you'll divide both sides by the log of 1.31. The point is that this is a lot more complex than if you just go back here and you divide both sides by 900. Now, you don't need to come up with a decimal for this yet. Just leave it be. You'll punch it in the calculator shortly. Dividing by 900 allows us to cancel the 900s, eliminating this step right here. And we can just take the log of both sides and bring that down in front. And once we bring that down in front, I'm going to bring it down now and erase this. Save some time here. I can just divide both sides by the log of 1.31. So put this in the calculator carefully. Watch your parentheses. I got t equals, we're going to the thousand three decimal spots. 13.317. Question four. You could try guessing and checking, but I'm guessing that that's not going to work well because it says round to three decimal spots. Let's solve this thing with logs. Take a log of both sides, 7 to the power of x equals the log of 1303. Bring this thing down. x times the log of 7 equals the log of 1303. And get x by itself. Divide by the log of 7. Punch this in the calculator. And three decimal spots. I got 3.68. 6 to the thousandth. You should be able to check your answer if you plug it in right here and take 7 to the power of your x, which was actually a k, I switched to x, 7 to 
eight six will be approximately this won't be exactly because we rounded this question six just like the last one to make this easy let's first of all get this by itself then divide by 4500 and we can take a log of each side and solve quickly first i would subtract 832 from each side 1832 minus 832 those are actually nice numbers aren't they 1000 and that equals 4500 times 1.08 to the power of 4x 4 is not going to matter as you'll see we'll divide both sides by 4500 And then we'll take the log of each side. Before we do that, maybe we want to simplify this. We could divide both of these by 100. And this would become 10 over 45 equals 1.08 to the 4x. You could simplify this further if you wanted. Divide by 5, you get 2. Divide by 5, you get 9 doesn't matter. You're going to punch it in the calculator anyway. Now take the log of both sides. The log of 2 ninths equals, and I'm going to bring this down when I take the log, 4x times the log of 1.08. To get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by 4 times the log of 1.08. You might want to put this in parentheses when you put it in the calculator or it'll probably come out wrong. Be very careful. To three decimal spots, this is negative 4.886. Odd answer, but the correct one. Here we are modeling a population and we're going to solve this with logarithms. This is a normal exponential equation, y equal to start, and it's each year, it's annually, so it's just 1 plus r to the power of x or t. It's decaying, so it's actually 1 minus r, 1 minus 0.11, or 1 plus negative 0.11. We got to look at the time, 2020, 2037, that is 17 years. So it's to the power of 17. And we were starting with 5,000. Oh, look here, we don't even need to use logs, do we? The question says round to the nearest whole number. So this would be 690 bears. Good review question. For this question, we're going to figure out what we have left after an hour, two hours, and 12 hours, and then the half-life. That's when half is left. How long does it take for half to be left? This is just like the last question. We set up our equation. We're starting with 530 milligrams. 1 minus 0.32 to the power of x or t, whatever you want to put there. So this first one will be 530 times 1 minus 0 0.32 is 0 0.68, 0 0.68 to the power of 1. This will be 530 times 0 0.68 to the power of 2. And this will be 530 times 0.68 to the power of 12. I calculated all those values and rounded to the 10th. Now let's find the half-life. That's how long it takes, that's the time, for the amount we start with to become half. And half of 530 is 265. We're solving this equation, 265 equals 530 times 0.68 to the power of x or t. 
To make this easy, we'll divide both sides by 530. Note that this will always be a half when you find half-life. You're going to solve this equation. One half equals 0.68 to the power of t. Take the log of both sides. The log of one half equals, and when I take the log of the side, I'm going to bring the exponent down, t times the log of 0.68. I'm going to find that time. I'm going to divide by the log of 0.68. Put this in the calculator. I rounded to the tenth. I found that t was about 1.8. 1.8 hours is how long it takes for half the medication to decay from the body. Notice on question 12, it asks for how many years. That's time. We're going to use logarithms to solve this. We're using this equation, y equal to start times 1 plus r to the power of t or x. It's growing here. It's currently 28,000. That's our start. 1 plus 0 0.029 is 2.9% to the power of t. And eventually, it's going to become 82,000. We'll divide both sides by 28,000. And if we divide both these by 1,000, those zeros will be gone. We get 82 over 28, which reduces divide by 2 to 42 over 14. 1.029 to the power of t. Take the log of both sides, the log of 41 over 14 equals, I'm going to bring that down, t times the log of 1.029. Divide by the log of 1.029. I'm going to edit this question and have it ask you to round to the tenth. This would be 37.6 years. Question 14, how long will it take $600 to double itself if invested at 2% compounded quarterly? No continuous growth yet. We're just doing regular exponential equations. Y equals start times 1 plus R. But if it's quarterly, it's going to be divided by 4 and going to the power of 4 will be 1 year, 4 times T. You're going to be starting with $600. It's going to double itself. It's going to become $1,200. It'll be 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4 because it's quarterly. To the power of 4 is 1 year. And we want to know T, solve for time. To make this easier to solve for, let's divide both sides by 600. 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4 to the power of 4t. We'll take the log of both sides, the log of 2, and I'm going to bring my exponent down. Is 4t times the log of 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4. I'm going to leave it like that because sometimes you have to round and that throws things off. Just leave it like that and punch it in Desmos and it'll come out perfect. I want to get T by itself. That means I have to get rid of the 4. Divide both sides by 4. That'll cancel. And then we'll also divide by the log of 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4. This is a little bit messy, but we punch in the calculator to find T, the log of 2 divided by 4 times the log of 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4. Be careful about putting parentheses in the right spot. You may need to put parentheses around this bottom part, depending on how you punch it in. Round to the nearest year, I got t equals 35 years.
a little more practice with annual, quarterly, and monthly. This is calculator work here. Here we get y equal to start, $8,000 times 1 plus r, that's 1 plus 0 0.077 to the power of 5. The second one will be y equals 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4 going to the power of 4 is one year, so 4 times 5 for 5 years. And the last one will be y equal 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 because it's monthly to the power of 12 is one year, so times 5 for 5 years. Put all this in the calculator. And there are the results. Round to the nearest penny, please. If the first part of this assignment slowed you down, the second part, a lot of it, goes very quickly. This is an example. Notice that this is E. When you see E, you're thinking natural log. Write this in logarithmic form. First of all, I'll start off with the plain old log. I know that in exponential form, the base of the exponent is E. So this should be the log base E. A logarithm is an exponent, and the exponent is D. So this becomes the log base e of y equals d, which we write with a natural logarithm. It would be the natural logarithm of y equals d. That's my answer. I'll write this both ways, just so you can see. This would be the log, the base is e. A log is an exponent, so it would be equal to x. That's my exponent. The log base e of 2 equals x which we would write as the natural log of 2 equals x. The second one would be the log base e. The log is an exponent. It would be equal to 5. The log base e of x equals 5, which we would write as the natural log of x equals 5. At the very end of the teaching, I mentioned that the natural log of e was 1. Reminder as to why the natural log has a base of e, and this means that e, the base, to the exponent, a log is an exponent to the power of 1, equals this value here, e. The natural log of e is 1. On this first one, we'll use our log rules and bring this down. This is negative 9 times the natural log of e. And as I just stated, the natural log of e is 1. This is negative 9 times 1, which is negative 9. Both b and c here use the idea of a previous chapter that if the base of 2, and it's to a logarithm that has a base of 2, that our answer to that is just an x. B and C, then the answers are 6 and root 3 because the base of the exponent is E and a natural log has a base of E, making these two questions the same as a property we got in a previous section. The last one, remember that 1 over E squared is the same thing as e to the negative second power. Remember how x to the negative second was 1 over x to the second? If I bring that down, this is negative 2 times the natural log of e, which we know is 1, negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. Here we will solve an equation that involves e, and when we do that, we use the natural log. It makes it much easier to work with. But just like we did with the regular log solving, it's much easier if you divide both sides, in this case by 21,000, to eliminate some of the steps. If we divide both of those by 1,000, it's 6 over 21 equals e to the 0.27x, 
Then we take the natural log of both sides. And when I take the natural log of this, I'm going to be able to bring my exponent down. We have 0.27x times the natural log of e. You know the natural log of e is 1. So we have the natural log of 6 over 21 equals 0.27x. And we'll divide both sides by 0.27. And just put this in the calculator. Careful on the rounding, the calculator had negative 4.639. The 8 bumped the 9 to a 10, and I had to carry that to the 3 to make the 3 a 4. And there's my answer. Here's a quick one. We're using this formula to model continuous growth. Uh, the amount we get is going to be what we start with, 6,600 times e to the rt, r is 0.041 for 4% times 16 years. Careful when you put this in the calculator, you may need to use parentheses around that. I got $12,718.65. I changed this to make it round to the nearest cent, which is what I'd prefer if it's money. For this first one, we want to know how long it takes to double when invested. 7,000 is going to become 14,000. We're going to start with 7,000. And E to the RT, and R is 0 0.07 times T. To make this easier to solve, let's divide both sides by 7,000. And I'll go here on the right side. This will be 2 equals E to the 0.07T. Take the natural log of both sides. That's because we got an E there the natural log of 2, and I'll bring this down when I do that, 0 0.07t times the natural log of e. We know that that's 1, so that's going to be gone. We'll divide both sides by 0 0.07, and t is 9.90. This is two decimal spots. The second one, we're going to see how long it takes for 700,000 to double. We're going to start with 700,000 e to the 0 0.07 times t. And it's going to double. It's going to be 1.4 million. 1,400,000. Million Again, notice that this is still 2. When you divide both sides by 700,000, 2 equals e to the 0.07t. It's exactly the same equation, so you know it's going to be the same answer. It's going to be 9.90. Question 25 is a calculator problem. Got a lot of punching in here to do. Annual is the normal equation. It's this one, but n is 1. We get a equals, and we're starting with 32,700 at an interest rate of, so it's 1 plus 0 0.06, or 1.06, to the power of time, because annual, remember, n is 1, and time is 5 years. Semi-annual, that would be twice a year. A equals 32,700 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 2. And going to the power, 2 is 1 year. We're going to do 5 years, so 2 times 5, that'll be 10. Monthly, I'm going to move this down a little bit, give myself some more room. Will be A equals 32,700. 
700 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. We take the rate and divide it by 12. To the power of 12 is 1 year, so it would be the power of 12 times 5, which is 60. Daily, A equals 32,700 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 365. To the power of 365 is 1 year, so times 5. And continuously, that's the PERT. Area equals 32,700, what you're starting with, that's your P, times E to the RT, and R was 0 0.06 times five years. Notice again that the more times we compound, the closer we get to that continuously compounded growth that we model with E. These last couple of questions are like some we did on a previous assignment where you just use the laws of logarithms to solve. When do you add exponents? That's when you're multiplying. This is the natural log of x times x minus 7 equals the natural log of 2x. This is the natural log of x squared minus 7x equals the natural log of 2x. I was tempted to try to get these on one side and then use division because you'd be subtracting your logarithms and when you subtract that you're dividing, that's exponent rule. But what you can do is, since these are the same base, you know, the only way they can be equal is if these two things are equal. x squared minus 7x equals 2x. That's x squared, we subtract 2x from both sides. x squared minus 9x equals 0. This has GCF factoring. It would be x times x minus 9 equals 0. There are two solutions here. What do you plug in that makes 0? Because 0 times anything is 0. That would be x equals 0 and x equals 9. Notice you can't take the natural log of 0. I'm looking right here. It doesn't work if you plug it in. In order for it to work, the natural log of 0 to be equal to something, it'd be base e. You need e to some power to be equal to 0. Uh, that's not possible. The only answer that works then is x equals 9. This last one's a lot like the previous one. Logarithms are exponents. Here you're adding your exponents. You add your exponents when you multiply. This is the natural log of x times x minus 5 equals the natural log of 7x. These have the same base. The only way they can be equal is if these two pieces are equal x squared minus 5x has to be equal to 7x. Let's move that over there, subtract so 7x. x squared minus 12x equals 0. It's a GCF. x times x minus 12 equals 0. There are two solutions. One is 0, because if you plug in 0, 0 times anything is 0. And the other is 12. And just like the last question, this is not possible. The only answer that works is x is 12.